In my previous video I made this airtight wooden bucket for my chip separator and in this video I'm gonna focus on the fin bevel part. I made another wooden disc with the same dimensions and also these flat spots that the lid of the bucket has. To start I draw a circle onto the disc and cut it out on the bandsaw. Drawing it was a little bit unnecessary because I used the circle jig anyways. And I was looking for the inside diameter of the ring. It should be a little bit smaller than the inside diameter of the bucket so they won't interfere with each other. Then I drew up the shapes for the cutouts in the top disc. I could also have made a paper template but because I had the dimensions in my head from drawing it, it was actually faster to draw it directly on the wood. Then cutting out these shapes on the scroll saw. And sanding them to the line with a spindle sander, or in my case a sanding spindle in the drill press. Hey look, I made a driving wheel! The thin baffle wall is made out of 3mm MDF. Then came the biggest challenge of this build, getting the MDF strip in the ring. I finally got it in, but it's still a little bit too long. A clamp holds one side in place while I try to fit the other one. So now I got this done. I can cut this piece to a diameter so it fits really snugly in between here. I removed some material with the bandsaw and made the final diameter with the disc sander. Now that's the fit I was aiming for. So the idea is that this piece is the top and the wall gets glued onto the edge and then it is flush with the top and the same for the ring but the ring is on the bottom then here this is all open and these holes are then covered up with some plexiglass so you can see what's going on inside the baffle. Now the challenge is how to glue this up because when I slide both pieces up then this gap would expand and this would ruin the glue up so I need to fix it at the same time on top and on bottom. So my solution is I cut the OSB ring that I used to make the bucket to the exact same dimensions as this piece and a band clamp makes sure that the wall is pressed tightly against here and then I could slide both those pieces up and now I can glue this ring in place. But before I do that I need to cut the hole where the dust collector attaches. And a 4 inch hose can fit into here. And spreading the glue a little bit. I tried to spread some glue on the inside wall by putting it in partially in different positions. And once it was in, wiping away the glue squeeze out. And I have to line it up pretty fast because with this tight joint the glue is going to set really quickly. And I let the glue dry upside down so I don't get glue drips on the inside. Once the glue was dry and I had removed the outer ring, the MDF started to split apart again because well it's just MDF and this is under a lot of tension. So to secure it in place I'm now going to put in some screws. So the next challenge is how to glue on this ring on the bottom. Well I can't put it on from the top because there are these two screws in the way. So I need to mount it from the bottom. But the problem is I can't unclamp this. It has to be clamped in some way because otherwise it could pop apart and maybe the glue joint on the top will fail. So I first routed a small chamfer to the inside which helps to get the ring on. And because of that tight joint I had to make some recesses for the glue so it had a place to go.
and then putting it on in a more or less elegant way. That was harder than I thought it would be, but the ring is on and I think there's enough glue in between the joint. While I put on the second coat of varnish on the bucket, I took the chance to also give the MDF a coat to protect it from moisture. Once it was dry, I sanded everything flush. Then I cut the parts for the inlet chute to size. And here's an adapter for my hose. And it's slightly conical in this section here, so I made this hole also conical and now it fits quite snugly here. And this then fits into the inlet. And this whole thing then gets attached here. Now I just need to glue it together and then cut the round section off. No special joinery here, just butt joints with screws. But I removed the screws again and drilled the screw holes bigger to insert some dowels. So the next challenge is how to cut this round section off of the inlet so it fits the baffle nicely. My approach to this is I screwed the piece onto the OSB disc and it's on the bandsaw circle jig. I lined it up correctly so when I turn it it will cut the right section off and this piece down here just supports it. So let's give it a try. It actually worked really good. I smoothed out the bandsaw cut with the drum sander opened. Now it fits really good. Next question is where to mount it. I think every hole that I make into the wall is gonna be a weak spot because this is permanently under stress and tension and I already got one weak spot and it's the seam. So my solution is to mount it directly over the seam so I don't get another weak spot and what this also allows is because I will screw this on and this has the same shape as the wall this will press the seam more into the circle and so I get rid of this bump. For that to work I had to replace countersink screws at the top. Then I hold the inlet on and traced around it to get the screw hole locations. And the best tool to make the inlet hole is a vibrating saw. So now with the inlet attached, this bump is pretty much gone and now I can file down this leftover flush with the inlet surface. This actually took quite a bit but I wanted to be very careful with that to make the inlet as smooth as possible. Now I have a nice seamless inlet. No bumps whatsoever. Next I cut the plexiglass to size and mark the cutouts so I know where I can drill some screw holes. What I also thought would be a good idea is to mount this wedge right here at the inlet so the air and dust that comes in here gets shot towards the wall and spins faster and this should improve the separation a little bit. Then I made the baffle. I decided to make it as a whole separate disc because there was no good way to mount it on the inside of the cyclone wall. And of course the diameter of the slot is big enough so it won't interfere with the cyclone wall. I gonna attach the baffle with this part right at the inlet. Once attached I flush trimmed it. And finally I attached the plexiglass. So now the separator part is basically done. Time for some testing.
The whole thing is not sealed yet, but as you can see it works pretty well. I still need an easy way to connect the bucket with the baffle and also paint it and you will see that in the next video.